They trailed him at sunset. They trailed him at sunset through the streets of Dodge City, through the gambling dens and flashy dance halls. They trailed him through the cattle country to Shantyville and Sirloin City, waiting in ambush with guns primed along the lonely mountain passes. They trailed him the long way to Texas, down every stretch of the old Chisholm Trail. But still he spurred steadily south, a young giant of a man, heedless of the enemy at hand, his single-minded purpose, a final showdown with the enemy that lay waiting ahead at the Diamond W Ranch. Colt-powered action by the creator of Zorro, Ghost Bullet Range. Hello and welcome back to this damn full idealistic crusade. This video is a review of the Bold Venture Press reprint of a phenomenally action-packed uh, Western pulp novel uh, originally written in 1942 by the legendary Johnston McCulley, and that is Ghost Bullet Range, which is also published under the very classic Western-sounding title of Blood on the Saddle. Uh, but Ghost Bullet Range was originally written and published in West Magazine in 1942, so this is one of the essential uh, classic Macaulay pulp novels and of course when you're talking about Johnston Macaulay and his most famous creation is of course the fox himself Zorro the legendary pulp hero which Bold Venture Press did collect every single Zorro tale in these six essential trade paperback and hardcover volumes that I have behind me and I've also reviewed on this channel uh, but like a lot of these small independent publishers who are preserving the history of pulp literature they have also done uh, a bunch of other novels and, and collections and things. So they've done a number of, of publications of other Macaulay stories, and this is one of their standalones. So this is actually quite a lengthy uh, pulp story, and, and it goes on far longer than the sort of simple premise would, would have you think it would go for. And in this paperback form, you know, it's actually clocking in at 182 pages. So you, you definitely get your money's worth. But I, I wanted to cover this because I do think Macaulay is is unbelievably underrated and unfortunately only a, a portion of, of his uh, quite substantial amount of, of uh, writings for, for pulp magazines has, has been preserved and he did create not just Zorro but other quite notable characters who are you know, very much precursors to to characters and, and elements that we're much more familiar with in, in works that came afterwards. So his impact cannot be understated. But when you decide you want a really fun, action-packed, and driven Western tale, there's no better person to turn to than the creator and writer of Zorro himself. Now, Ghost Bullet Range literally opens with a bang. It it centers around our lead character of Phil Banneton, who is a young, well, youngish, uh, unbelievably tough and rough cattleman, cowboy, gunslinger, what, whatever label you want to apply to him, uh, who, who literally has just completed a, a, a cattle drive and is waiting, uh, waiting out to uh, actually, you know, com continue his business in the morning. And for some reason in the darkness, guys start taking pot shots at him and there's snipers after him. And he manages to have a gun battle with them in the darkness. And that's literally page one. I mean, the book does not, it literally starts with a bang. And this was, of course, designed for a pulp magazine. And you had to hook the reader early and, and keep them entertained. And Macaulay was a master at this because there is so much action in this story. It, it really is the defining characteristic. Uh, because this is a, a pulp story, you're not necessarily going to get the greatest amount of characterization, but that's also not, not exactly the point. This was meant to entertain readers with their, you know, dime or, or 15 cents and, and give them the most possible amount of excitement in a story. And the overall plot is... You know, actually, actually quite good and solid and, and seems very much archetypal of a number of different westerns. And the other great strength of this story is as you're reading it, you can actually envision the classic western film that could be made from this. So I was reading this and I can actually see the movie in my head. Uh, of, of course, a, a western made in the 1940s probably wouldn't have the same body count that you could get away with in a pulp novel. So again, the, the saying that action is the greatest characteristic of this is an understatement because there's quite a specific 
substantial body count. There are many fights and gun battles, and they're all exquisitely well done because, again, this is Johnston McCulley who, you know, created and wrote all the Zorro tales. So the action, of course, is first rate. But uh, the main plot is Phil Bannison is essentially drawn in to a, a drama surrounding the Diamond W Ranch, where he sort of grew up and was the the, the sort of favored or, or uh, the the son that never was of of the ranch owner and un, eventually they had a sort of disagreement and Bannaton struck out on his own kind of leaving his past and his his family of sorts behind this is an idea that has you know been done countless times in in western so again as, as i said it seems pretty archetypal and these elements will be familiar to any western fan but uh, the the ranch is under siege and Bannaton has to make the long journey back and and deal with you know not only being away for so long and 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 having to uh, come back into where he sort of grew up but also try and assist with the problem that's going on which is the titular ghost bullet range men on the Diamond W Ranch are being killed off by uh, seemingly uh, gunshots and, and bullets that come from nowhere because no one can find any trace of a would-be sniper or attacker, and so no one knows why they're being killed off. But it does seem very much that uh, someone is out to destroy the ranch and then be able to obtain the land and the uh, the livestock at at a at extremely low cost and. It, it, you know, there, there's there's a lot of people who would like to do that. There's a lot of entities, essentially, who would be out for uh, uh, obtaining ownership of the ranch at any cost. So, again, nothing that's really outside of uh, Western tropes or or, or or the archetype. So most people might come to this and think, oh, this is this is pretty straightforward. But it it's not the the simplicity of of the plot that's that's going to draw people in and keep them hooked. It's the intensity of the action. It's the atmosphere. It's the dialogue, which is all perfectly rendered. And Macaulay does try to at least give a sort of flavor of of the dialect. So you see uh, certain words being used. You see certain being used throughout and also you you get a sense of the sort of code of conduct of of the western that in in their own particular way even when uh you know the would-be attackers and killers have been disarmed or or maimed or shot in the shoulder or something that eventually they they reach a certain point where there's there's a certain almost there's almost a certain code of chivalry uh, amongst all of, of the characters, and you see this sort of inherent in a lot of Westerns, and it's usually the villains, the, the ultimate villains, who are the ones who don't recognize any of this, and, and they want what they want, and nothing else matters, and they're the ones who do the, the nastiest and, and uh, the, make, make the darkest actions uh, because they don't have that, that, that sort of chip in them, uh, that, that sort of inherent uh, chivalry. We do have a wonderful cast of characters who, again, they're, they're so wonderfully drawn and, and so based in the Western archetype that you can literally see them in the movie in your head. The ranch owner is the big, boisterous bear of a man uh, who is the sort of father figure. And he, of course, has a beautiful daughter who was the great love of Banditon that he wound up leaving behind, and she's been pining away for him ever since. So there's the old flame that must be rekindled. There are the other sort of old timer characters who are wonderfully colorful and, and they have all of this sort of wisdom of the West that they have imparted. But uh, this isn't to say that there aren't some surprises in this book because the actual, uh, the, the way the men are being killed does take a while to uncover and there is a little bit of a mystery aspect. And it's, you know, it, it's not something you actually see a lot in the Western in terms of it is a little bit ingenious in, in how the, the, the mechanic is done and how uh, people are being killed off with there being no sign of anyone or any uh, any horse tracks or hoof prints anywhere. So that that was that was nicely done and, and set up and, and, and achieved. But then the other thing is there is there is a very gritty and grim tone throughout because this was a pulp novel and you could get away with being much more realistic than you could in a Western film at the time. You you know when when guys get shot in the shoulder, they they literally go down and are, are miserable. You know, they, they the 
the heroes and villains do have to worry about how many bullets they still have in their gun. And when they're wounded, they have to worry about, you know, how can they possibly take out three guys with only, you know, uh, two or three bullets in their gun? Or you know, they, they have to worry about the uh, on the long journey possibly being ambushed. And they have to worry about their horses getting tired and finding a place to switch out for a fresh horse. And they have to worry about resting after a long trip. So it's, it's not the sort of... Uh, uh, typical cinematic Western idea of everything always being about gunslingers who are almost superhuman and they don't have to worry about uh, real world constraints. Real world constraints are all throughout this book. And on top of that, you still have a supremely high body count. And there's also moments of, you know, real bursts of violence. Uh, the book builds to not just one, but really two gigantic uh, gun battles between the two factions. And eventually, the, the finale of the book is the entire town, the, the small little town, is under siege. And this is after the giant gun battle at the ranch, where buildings are set on fire and men are killed everywhere. So uh, after that, we have the entire town sort of divided up under the two factions and then there's a sort of ceasefire when they have to deal with hostages so this deal this this whole event goes on for like like at least a day or two so it's it's a really massive sequence that has multiple uh, just gigantic all-out gun battles and the the men are getting more and more tired and there's a lot of back and forth and it's really well done and well executed and really gritty so you definitely get your money's worth uh, in terms of the overall action content and if you want something that's just really fun but it's also grim in places in particular the darkest moment is when they uh when bandit and his men manage to uh, capture one of the villains and uh, they they know that he has been the the one of the responsible for murdering all of these men uh and uh, frequently in cold blood because of course the 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 sniper bullets come out of nowhere and after using him to further uncover the uh the the actual the who the real villains are and uh, basically uh, admit that publicly they they do actually uh they 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 actually hang him frontier style uh with with a rope over a tree and it is extraordinarily matter of fact and you very much feel as if you are there and you can visualize in your head this being in a film because as i've said the whole book you can imagine the western film that would be made from this exactly as it was written because you can so clearly visualize everything macaulay is writing about and so this is while, while, while it's you know got 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 a fun flavor to it and it's very action driven and the characterization is is nicely done but but minimized there are moments of great darkness and the grim tone of reality is maintained throughout which is again one of the book's strongest suits but it is at its highest in this sequence where they do actually hang one of the murderers and they, they just they got him on the horse and they they put the rope around his neck and and of course the guy you know obviously starts freaking out a bit and they they actually do hang him and it's very matter of fact very grim but very much in keeping with the grim sense of reality that is throughout the whole of this book so i i think this is a phenomenally well executed western story it is more action per page than <laughs> than uh, you, you you get certainly in in a book today it is very much a pulp novel but it is extraordinarily well done as everything Johnson McCauley ever wrote and I'm I'm pretty much determined I I, I really want to try and read every every bit of of McCauley's fiction that that I possibly can and thankfully due to uh, outfits like Bolt Venture Press there are uh, a bit by bit more and more stories that are becoming available again without having to actually go and track down very fragile and very hard to find original pulp magazines so that's why I wanted to talk a bit more in detail about this because it's not something you're you're going to really hear about you just kind of stumble across it like I did and this is just a ridiculously fun very gritty very action-driven western that 
uh, does kind of make you wish that you, you immediately had a, had a second book of more of this because it is very well done. And most of all, you can see the Western of this story in your head playing out, and it kind of makes you wish there was a movie version of this. Now, let's talk about the actual Bold Venture printing. This is a lovely sort of bigger-sized trade paperback. It has the wonderful pulp artwork that was actually, I believe this is originally from the Avon paperback reprint, uh, because I tried to figure out, and that, that was where I, I found this image. So it looks like they, they took the imagery from the uh, vintage Avon paperback reprint. And again, this was also published under the title of Blood on the Saddle. Uh, so, of course... The bold color, the, the the smoking six guns, the look on Benetton's face, you know, that's just, this tells you the, the sort of experience you're going to have. And trust me, the book does not disappoint. So if this cover intrigues you at all, this is the type of gritty, fun, dark action, high body count that, uh, the, that, that you're going to get, you know, this, this promise of this wonderfully pulpy image, uh, is certainly fulfilled. This is nicely bound. It looks wonderful. The rear has a nice blurb and, and a nice sort of aged section of the front artwork. And also this is very inexpensive. The list price is $10. This is a print on demand title that they also sell as an ebook, which is, of course, cheaper. But because Bold Venture also sells their, uh, their, their print on demand titles through Amazon, or at least most of them, uh, this is one that frequently pops up on discount. So currently, this is selling for about $5 which is insanely cheap because this is a really nicely put together little pulp reprint. So that's why I really wanted to do a video because this is one of those books that's so absurdly cheap that I would recommend anyone pick it up. Uh, even at $10, it's it's a great, uh, great value, but for $5 for a printed copy, that's just nuts. Uh, the actual text inside does have a little bit of nice stylization. They did this little sort of grayed out effect with the uh, bullets from Benetton's gun ostensibly, but, but these bullets piled up right here. And they use this on every chapter page. So not only do you get a nice sort of bigger version for the title page, but every time you reach a new chapter, you get this, this nice little graphic motif repeated again. And I just I just like that additional touch. And then here, you get it expanded over the credit page. So it's just a little simple thing, but I, I really like that extra touch they did. And then also the text is really nicely laid out. So it's it's very easy to pick up and read. You know, it's 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 very easy on the eyes, which is always something you, you want in any sort of book printing. But especially a, a pulp reprint, it's it's uh you know sometimes they're using uh, old, old scans or you're dealing with with double columns and, and sometimes when they reformat those it doesn't, doesn't necessarily work right but as you can see here that is not an issue at all also uh, what, what was nice is anytime you're dealing with one of these smaller independent companies doing print on demand reprints and things unfortunately sometimes you do run into the occasional typo or a problem with the typeface or, or, or a point where there's an issue with a word or something and unfortunately that does mar one of their Zorro volumes volume 2 unfortunately does have a, a number of really distracting typos but overall the, 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 the rest are fine uh, Thankfully, there's there's nothing major here. There's there's like one spot where one word is 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 bolded for some reason, but there's there's no actual typos or, or problems with the words and things. So that that was that was great because I I have kind of come to expect anytime I'm reading a, a small publisher print on demand title that occasionally you're going to run into some typos. So thankfully there were none here, and there's also a, a couple nice ads for some of their other various reprints which look really enticing. So that's why I wanted to talk about the Bold Venture Press reprint of a Ghost Bullet Range, the 1942 pulp novel by the legendary Johnston McCulley. Uh, at the absurdly cheap price of like $5.60, I think, is, is what it's going for right now on Amazon for a nicely done print-on-demand pulp reprint. This is a no-brainer. This will give you a ridiculous amount of entertainment, and it's a fun, gritty pulp western story with a 
really nice focus on gritty reality, but also fun action and a significantly high body count. So uh, it is ridiculously entertaining, very well done, and one of those books that you just want to just keep going through because the action is so good and it's just hooked you in so fully. And if you're at all a fan of the Zorro stories, it is a great idea to dig further into Macaulay's other work. And this is a great place to do so because this is a nicely done reprint and is also absurdly cheap right now. So those are my thoughts on the Bold Venture Press reprint of Ghost Bullet Range. I had an absolute blast reading this and that's why I wanted to sort of further spread that, uh, that this book is out there in this incredibly affordable, nicely done reprint, and it's just so much fun that I, I, I just kind of wanted to just go up to people and be like, hey, you want a really fun, pulpy Western? Here you go. So that, that, that was really the impetus for making this video, and also I, I really like to support and champion um, small independent publishers, especially the ones doing these, these really important acts of preserving elements of, of the pulp era of literature, which is so completely undervalued, underrepresented, and not well preserved at all outside of these these uh, small groups and, and individuals trying to do it on their own. And it's such an important section of literary history that uh, with without these efforts, it quickly disappeared and does not get talked about, analyzed, or discussed in the way that it should, because it is truly one of the most important eras in all of American literature. But Unfortunately, you're not going to hear about it in literature courses or, or the sort of more highbrow aspects of, of literary studies. But honestly, it should be because it is truly that important. And this is just so incredibly fun that I think everybody will get, uh, get something from reading this particular Macaulay Pulp novel. So as always, I hope my babblings about pulp fiction and these fantastic companies doing their best with pulp reprints and preserving pulp fiction and pulp literature has been at least somewhat fun and informative. I highly encourage everyone to go and check out Ghost Bullet Range, particularly while it's so uh, insanely cheap on, on Amazon through the uh, Create Space print-on-demand program. I'll have a link in the description below and Again, it's so cheap right now that uh, you really can't go wrong with, with uh, picking a copy up and just having an absolute blast. So as always, uh, please do keep reading, keep supporting independent publishers and bookstores wherever possible, and thank you ever so much for watching.